So the basic steps can be the start preterm and term babies on CPAP 5 to 6, adjust the FIO2 to keep saturation close to 95. Our aim is to keep 90 to 95, but when I say keep closer to 95, it's to decide on what the actual FAO2 needed is because the baby may maintain 90% saturation uh, with the FAO2 of 28-26%, uh, but when you actually need to bring it to 95, you start crossing 30%. So you are not delaying your decision making. We don't want more than 95%, of course, you don't want hyperoxia. So 90 to 95, aiming closer to 95% is a good idea not to delay your uh, diagnosis based on the FAO2 criteria. Uh, chest x-ray is a point assessment and uh, it's not a good guide to the need of surfactant. It would support surfactant therapy if there is moderate to severe RDS, but a picture of mild RDS with significant clinical signs or a rising FAO2 would still warrant surfactant therapy. So uh, most of us do the chest x-ray to go with the diagnosis for this uh, insurance purposes as well, but to clinically decide you can do use a lung ultrasound if you have it better than an x-ray. And also remember that the FAO2 is variable, the same baby can quickly start uh, developing slight shunting uh, PPH and like scenario, the FAO2 can rise. So if there is respiratory distress, even with the PPH and scenario, if there is RDS like picture, you can give surfactant. So that might improve because it's all compound, uh, I mean, it's all uh, linked to each other. So the lung disease causes hypoxia, the hypoxia causes pulmonary vasoconstriction and the PPH and like setting starts. Uh, and this will worsen if the lung disease is not treated. So you need to decide whether it is RDS or not. Uh, of course, primary PPHN in a term baby is different scenario. So uh, if you have uh, FAO2 slightly on the lower side, not meeting the criteria, but the baby has clinical findings suggesting RDS, you can decide to give surfactant even if it's not meeting the FAO2 criteria. So it's not one criteria alone, it's the overall picture. So the combined clinical judgment based on all the factors, uh, if the mother didn't have antenatal steroids, there's a risk of infection, the baby needed resuscitation, etc. would add to the risk as well, especially if there is acidosis. Uh, we mentioned that in these cases, avoid NIPPV and if clinical concerns are there, it's better to give surfactant by insurer or LISA before moving to NIPPV.